Welcome back friends. May, is it May 3rd, 2019 for a Wrangler Star premiere video. I'm actually here with you in the comments if you're watching this live uh, and you can answer questions. Mrs. W and of course uh, LT Wrangler Star, which is Jack, uh, will be in the comments as well. Uh, it's kind of a new format that we've been having a lot of fun with. So today, this was a video that was actually requested by a subscriber. He wanted me to test the cheapest hatchet on Amazon that he had purchased this and he was telling me well, how a, what a good deal it was, what a good value was and how much he enjoyed it and if I could do a video on it. So I went ahead and ordered one. I found it for I think $12 and some change and I thought we'd put it through its paces. So uh, let's, go, let's get started. All right, let's take a look at what we have here. Actually, before we get started, this is not, let me repeat, this is not the cheapest hatchet on Amazon this one is. I've actually reviewed this. This is the one that I put the Super Edge on. This is, uh, of course, you're going to see these branded under the Culligan name. Uh, they are sold at, you've probably seen them at Walmart. This is a hatchet you don't want. If you have this, uh, just throw it away. Uh, take the edge off it, use it for a doorstop. There was a recall on these things uh, and the heads come off. The head is not fastened properly to the hatchet. You're going to be able to buy these things for about $10 just save your $10. It's just, it's not worth having. It's dangerous. What nothing is more dangerous than a loose head on something. If you swing this up, uh, this thing could go flying. If you had children around, it's just not re recommended. I, I've kept it around just, I don't know why, probably because I spent so much time on, <laughs> on getting that beautiful edge on there. Uh, but this is actually the cheapest hatchet, but I'm not going to really consider this because I don't like this, not only because of the safety issue, but once that handle is broken or gone, there's nothing you can do with it. You can see it doesn't have an eye in it like a traditional hatchet. What's kind of intriguing about this guy at the $12 range, now remember, guys will go on there after I do these videos and the price may change. You know, Amazon, they fluctuate, they move around a little bit, so you never know. All I know is I bought this for $12. What it's going to be when you watch this video, I don't know, but it'll probably be at or near that. But it's kind of interesting in a couple ways. So I, this has, of course, it's got a plastic handle. Now I, plastic handles are useless for tools. I remember when I was uh, had my excavating uh, business and um, the, I, I was trying, you know, I didn't, when you, sometimes those wooden, wooden handles, you know, when you're, when you are trying to make production and you, you know, leaving stuff out and you just, you know, it's all about the money, you want something that's going to be less maintenance. And I was kind of going that route and, and I, some of those plastic handles came out for the shovels and rakes that we would use, but they were all squishy. You know, they would bend and they would flex and you couldn't, didn't, I mean, they were, they were terrible. What's kind of interesting about this one is I was surprised how rigid it is. As soon as I saw the plastic handle, I mean, I had, like zero expectations. But if you look here, this is all my weight, you know, 205 pounds or so right there. There is no flex in this thing. And I got to look and I thought, man, this is this some sort of new fancy plastic? Well, it's not, it's just a clever trick. And I looked inside there and I saw white, which means most likely fiberglass. So this has got a fiberglass shaft inside of it that goes all the way through. And actually, to be honest with you, a fiberglass handle is a good handle. Fiberglass is an amazing material. My granddad's camp, he had a camp axe that we had hunting for years that had a red fiberglass handle. Um, and uh, up until, you know, I don't know who ended up with that, uh, but it was going forever. So I, I'm, I do like fiberglass handles because they are super tough. So why they didn't just make the whole thing fiberglass? I don't know. Maybe they wanted this beautiful green color, which is kind of a nice thing because you're not going to walk off and lose this, right? You're going to see it in the dark. So that's kind of cool. So it's actually a pretty decent handle. We've got uh, material wise. We'll talk about the design here in a minute. It's got a lanyard hole on it. Never have thought, found a need for a lanyard hold other than maybe if you wanted to hang it up uh, in your shop uh, on a loop or something like that or stick it on a nail. I have seen axes, uh, lots of them. Don't lean your axe against a wall. The short handled ones like this are not going to be affected, but your long ones, your American felling axes and stuff, they'll get a bow in them. I saw an axe that had it looked like a looked like you could string it and shoot an arrow with it. It had such a bow in it, and it took me years of getting that thing um, straightened out because it was a good handle. So, uh, so we have that. The head, of course, is uh, I mean pretty garden variety. Uh, one pound, one and a quarter pound for a camp axe is ideal. A camp axe is going to be used primarily for two things. 
as a hammer. You're gonna pound uh, tent stakes or different things or who knows what, maybe batoning things, and then splitting kindling and chopping little things. It's a, it's a great survival tool. And I've always tell everyone, you know, you should in your emergency kit, you should either have some sort of a good saw uh, or a small hatchet. Uh, because if you live in the country where there's, there's trees, you get in somewhere in a windstorm and they blow down all the time. If you don't have something to, to chew through that tree, uh, you're going to be there a while, right? You can't pull it out of the way. So, yeah, you can chop your way out. But one of the cool things about this guy, little guy here is it's going to have, it's got a, um, a regular eye in it. So if you wanted to, if you wanted a nice little project that you could do, you guys will ask, what, what should I want to make an axe handle? What should the first one be? This would be a good one to go with because you've got a, an axe head that's got a pretty decent design on here. A pretty decent shape. It's got a great weight on it, um, and you could drill that out. You just take your hacksaw and you could cut that guy off there, punch it out, um, and put a new handle on, provided that it's made right. And we'll check that. So what we have to have with an axe handle on the eye is it's got to be smaller on the bottom and it's got to be bigger on the top. The reason for that is when we put the handle in, we want the handle to mushroom out when we put that wedge in there, and that'll make it nice and tight. So I can just check. I'm not. Actually, I'm using, I, I, I haven't given up on my 940 Osborne. That's still my go-to knife, but I do, I've been carrying this little Gerber around because I like the point on it. It's good for opening stuff. Uh, okay, so if we measure, just use this as a gauge right here. I can kind of see that, uh, put my finger on that. If we transfer that to the top, we can see that indeed, it's probably an eight to three sixteenths bigger on the top. So it is properly designed. Not necessary with an epoxied head like that, but, um, Kind of just just kind of a data point there for uh, uh, if you wanted to put a wood handle on it. What's the quality of the steel? Uh, that we don't know, but check this out. So, I when I was on Amazon, of course, you know you get the recommended deal on the side there. <laughs> they recommended a sharpening stone here, five bucks. So axe and uh, and a double grit fine and coarse sharpening stone, which is like a one twenty. What is this thing? It's a one one fifty and a two eighty. There we go. Uh, is uh, uh, what 17 bucks did i just do math on the 12 and fives <laughs> 17 or 18 bucks so you could get this nice little sharpening stone here um for which is aluminum or what is it oxide is this aluminum oxide yeah aluminum oxide this is a good little stone uh five bucks so that's a pretty good combo right there we'll use this to put a little edge on it so uh we have a bash guard here of course which is um well you just take that thing and throw it away they put they put those things on there thinking that that's going to protect the handle if you overstrike it's not going to do anything so just get rid of that but uh, all in all uh, doesn't seem too too bad made in india we can't really have any expectations uh, on the edge is it even hardened you know i don't know but it's 12 bucks you know so what do you get for 12 bucks uh ergonomic wise um it's pretty horrible uh <laughs> it's uh you know, you want to axe when, or you want a small hatchet uh, for doing field work and field craft work uh, to be able to choke up on it, right? So you might find yourself doing, um, you know, carving little things or making spoons or, or you know, just all the various tax, tasks that you do when you're camping. Uh, this is a very uncomfortable handle. It's got this weird bulge in it, and it's the main problem is it's sharp on the edges right here. Uh, could I take a file and take that out? Uh, maybe. I don't know if it'd be worth the trouble. And you know ha what happens when you try to file this plastic. In the middle, uh, the grip is decent, but that's usually the last place that you want to grab it. So that doesn't do us a whole lot of good. Down here, we've got the textured handle. And again, the same problem on the Fawn's foot is it, it's just too sharp. It's got too much point on it. It's a very uncomfortable hatchet. It's not something that you would want to use all day. Uh, it would kill you. But um, for just occasional use, um, chopping, kindling and things, it'd probably be fine. So let's, uh, let's put a little edge on it uh, and see how it splits. I'm starting to think perhaps the better deal is this little oxide sharpening stone. You know what a good project would be for us is to take you know, the old stones. These are kind of delicate. They've got the you know, sharp edges on them, which are easy to knock off. That's why the round pocket stone is a good one for, for your pocket because it's that Lansky stone because it's got those chamfers knocked off. Uh, but the old stones used to come in these just beautiful little wooden cases and the stone would just fit down in the case and it would stick up, you know, proud, you know, maybe like three sixteenths or so and the little wooden cap on the top with a latch on it. I've seen them in antique stores. That might be a good project for us. And what a great gift that would be if we could find like a quick and easy way to make those and you could buy a, you know, a nice, if this turns out to be a decent stone for five bucks or so, and you could make a nice case out of a piece of 
walnut or, or you know, some wood that's that's local to your area, that would be that would be a pretty cool gift. Maybe we'll have to do that. Okay, so a good stone um, needs to be, you need a lubricant of some sort. Now, kerosene or diesel is the best. Look at the way that that stone soaks that up in there. What The reason why you do this, um, and I don't care what anyone says, I have never found anything that works as as good as just diesel or kerosene. They're both the same thing, basically. But what I'll do with a new stone like this, if you have the time, is actually sit it, submer submerge it in that diesel, and it will soak. You'll be surprised how much it'll soak it up. Look at that right now, just like a sponge. The reason we put this on here is that it carries the material away. So I'll just keep doing this until it just won't accept any more here, and we'll do it on both sides. Um, and when you get a stone like this that's been well used, like my granddad's old stone, uh, it was just impregnated with, uh, with kerosene, um, and you don't have to use it near as much, but your first time you will. Yeah, it's starting to slow down a little bit. But, uh, of course, we've got the, the coarse there and then the fine. If we look at the edge that came on here, it's actually pretty respectable. Um, it's a little bit sharp. Sharper than I would like, I would probably back that up a little bit. But having this type of edge is going to make it last a long time. When you have that blunter edge, it's going to be really durable, and, and it's going to hold an edge better. And that's probably your best bet, bet for a mystery steel uh, like you get from um, India and such. So uh, all you do, you know, of course, as we know, you know, we'll just just find that angle right there. You can usually tip it up, and and what you're kind of looking for. Is, is you want to shit you you're trying to almost trying to shave uh, just a microscopic layer of that stone off it a circular pattern and if that diesel or that kerosene just keep adding that and we just want to smooth that up a little bit Let's see how it feels on it splitting so we've got some uh, we've got grand fur here pretty Pretty uh, small stuff, but it's dry, so it's going to be a little stringy. The, the handle is atrocious. Um, that's the first thing that I noticed. I can't, I can't. I can't get over that. It's uh, it's unhandy. It feels really bad. It feels awkward. I, I don't have any confidence in it. I feel like I don't have much control on it because it's it's really horrible. Uh, the shape of the handle. Um, the head. It's a good little axe head. If it had a different handle on it, it would be a a pretty nice little nice little deal. But uh, of course, you know. Then we also have with the plastic. We have that that deadness we don't have that snap like we like to have with our hickory or ash handles um yeah it's it's the handle that's that's the the thing that really is is horrible about it 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 doesn't feel good to choke up on there's it's pushing on the back of my thumb um it's slippery it's flat it's dead no, I know. You know, I mean, I get it. It's 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 the twelve dollar axe, and you know, I always get accused of. I, we don't need to go any further than here. So, I, I get accused of the snobbery, and yeah, you know, I know I get that. I mean, it's it's foolish if you don't if you don't have a wood stove and you're not splitting kindling, you know, twice a week and all that. It, I mean, it doesn't make sense to buy a Grand Force Brooks or something expensive like that. No, I get that. Uh, but if you want something just to have in an emergency kit uh, or a um, uh, occasional camping once in a while it's probably fine I think the best thing to do and this would be a good a good place for you to start because it's hard to find these good little uh, axe head handles is to just chop that off draft drive drift that thing through there and uh, try that try your first handle uh, make, make yourself a handle and uh, see what happens you can go to there's still a lot of hardware stores that are going to carry the small hatchet handles and you could get it and um, you don't even have to make it or you can start with that and hang your own then you'd have a pretty good little tool there um, I think um, we're not going to have unrealistic expectations on the steel of course but this handle is terrible it's rigid um, I do like that it doesn't feel as bad as some of the plastic handles that I've used um, but the shape of it is horrible it's terrible here it's worse on the back end um, it's too small in the middle. It's just uncomfortable and sharp, and it's just not 
uh, really a good viable option. You know, here's the thing though, is that um, when you have something that's really good and something that's, that's high quality, like let's take for example, you know, I, I made a beautiful little handle on my granddad's ax heads uh, or hatchet heads that I use for our kindling splitting. Um, and you have that little sense of joy every time you use it, you know, that, that there's something special about it. You remember the effort that went into it, or if you were going to have a Grand Force Brooks, you know, you know, the quality and hand, you know, basic kind of handmade deal and all the history and the Swedish heritage. It gives you that little bit of joy every time you use it. And that has a value uh, to me. It has a, a great value because it just to have those little boosts in life, like, oh, that was, you know, it's a joy to grab this or it feels good in the hand or it works well with the body. Um, so, you know, that's, I guess that's how you could justify spending, a, <laughs> spending some money on a, on a nice ax like that. But does this have a place, um, for a $12 deal? Yeah, this would be a great emergency kit deal. Uh, I have, I'll, I'll tell you, um, I, I have, uh, for some reason, I often come across car wrecks and, and I have, or people that have, or, or people that have gotten injured or hurt. This happened to me. It happens to me. It seems like a couple times a year. That's why I'm so diligent about carrying a good first aid kit. Um, but I have rolled years ago. I rolled up on a car accident that, um, a guy was trapped inside and the engine was smoking and you know, who knows what could happen. And if you've ever tried to break through a tempered glass window, uh, on a car, it's it's near impossible unless you have something that's got an edge on it or a point. You can smash them with hammers, mauls, and they won't break some of them that are so tough. And when you get in a front impact, uh, it will oftentimes crunch those doors and you can't get those doors open and you have someone trapped inside and what if there was a fire? So you roll up on that and you, you have your vehicle and you don't have anything to break that open. Um, I mean, it, it can be a bad deal. So that's one of the reasons why I like to carry something like that, at least a glass breaker or a, um, or an ax. You'll get through any window with this, uh, with that point on there. No, no question. So, um, it, I think you should have it in your emergency kit. Um, and if it's just a beater like this, it would be fine. It's going to help to wear, have some gloves with this because it's so slippery on the hand and the glove is going to kind of somewhat fill up the voids in the handle uh, that it lacks. Uh, but, um, yeah, for $12, um, you can't hardly beat it. I, I would probably spend a little bit more and, and get into an S-Wing um, or something like that. You can get into those or, you know, probably for $30. But, um, yeah, but still you could have three of these for the price, price of one of those. So that's it. So I suppose that's probably about all the time we have for today. Mrs. W's uh, folks are visiting uh, in from the, the great state of Nebraska. They brought me this hat representing Nebraska today. Uh, and they're uh, uh, touring some uh, and some art deals, and so I'm I'm doing firewood today. So if you can see, I always get questions about these uh, circles here and how much firewood we burn a year. So la this winter, uh, it, we're still having fires, um, but we burnt two of these circles. So uh, this one here was completely gone, and um, I just finished we just finished stacking this one up here. Uh, the second one we burnt down to almost all of it. So that how much firewood is that? Those are about. Uh, two and a half to two and a quarter cords uh, in those things. So I, I would say, uh, I would say what we burnt, we burnt five cords, good solid five cords this year. Uh, and that's with us being home all the time. So that's pretty amazing. Cause I know guys, some of you folks up there in the Midwest or up in the North, uh, Northeast and stuff, you tell me you'll go through 10, 11 cords. That's a lot of firewood. That would be, that would basically be four of these stacks. So I have firewood. I can one year, two year, three year, four year, five, five years of firewood right here, pretty much uh, for us. Plus I have probably four times that much cut over there in the processor that we're in stacking now. So I've got my workout cut out for me today. That's what I'm doing is stacking up, uh, or getting firewood today. So why do we stack them like this? Well, I think it looks really cool. It's amazing how many people drive by and they'll pull in the driveway and like, what, what is that? That looks really nice. You know, why do you do that like that? I, talking to people over the fence all the time about that. Uh, it's an old way. I don't know if it was the Scandinavians that came up with it or perhaps the Germans. Sometimes they claim that they, they invented it. Uh, but it is um, a good way to uh, dry wood out because you should be doing your firewood right now uh, for this coming spring 
this coming fall so that it has a time to, dr to dry out. Um, and it kind of creates, as it heats up, it kind of creates a chimney effect. So we make the circles and then we fill it up with the loose stuff or the, the stuff that kind of has a weird shape to it. And it's really good and dry. Back in the day, uh, like the Scandinavians, they have a lot of birch trees over there. And birch bark is a really wonderful, uh, it's really a waterproof material. They make uh, bas way baskets, all sorts of things with it. And they would take the bark. And you know how a clay tile roof works, right? How it has the how it has the curves in it, and then they overlap. And so as the water hits, you know, it, it funnels and runs down there. They do the same thing with the bark and they basically make a roof over the kind of over the top that sheds the water. So if these are done properly with the bark, uh, you can leave them out uncovered and, then, and the wood will stay um, a good enough season. It'll season and stay uh, good enough to, to burn. So that's why, uh, that's kind of why we do that is uh, it's fun to do. It looks nice and it's a, just a good easy way to, or a simple way to stack it that um, dries out really quickly. So uh, click the thumbs up if you haven't. If you enjoy these videos, uh, we invite you to become members of Wrangler Star Channel. Um, there's a little membership deal right now. It's a way for you to support the channel. I would ultimately like to just to get away from YouTube altogether with the AdSense model and all that and just be subscriber supported. And that way we don't have to worry about censorship. They can do all the things they want to do and they can put all the arbitrary rules that, that they want. It won't affect us because you guys uh, support me um, and we can do the content that we want, but uh, we're, we're working our way there. So I invite you to go over there. What I've been doing is I'm gonna be trying to release the videos early. So you get to see them before everyone else as well as some individual or some unique content that I'll put up and family stuff from time to time and little vlogging videos and things like that. So thanks for watching and we'll see you guys on the next video.